Hi, I'm Dr Chris Moore and I'm the program lead for the undergraduate degree in biomedical science at UE Bristol and this is going to be a run through on how you can use Microsoft Forms combined with Excel and some simple formula to collect and better monitor uh, student attendance. Now you can do this in, in multiple ways and obviously we've got My Attendance and My Attendance is a way of providing students with a code specific to the class that they are timetabled for that is provided to them by the academic that is timetabled for that class. No other member of staff has that code. Um, you have to be timetabled in order to have it. So if you do change who's covering a session if someone's ill, they won't have that code to hand to provide to the students. You can provide it whenever you want. You also have to provide it um, each time that there is a code. So if you have timetabled a three hour teaching session as three separate blocks of time, there will be a code for each block of time and you must provide that code to the students, otherwise it will be registered as an absence on my attendance, which feeds into my engagement and therefore gives them uh, a different perspective of their engagement with their course and the attendance uh, in that particular class and that particular module. Now, some of the limitations with this, of course, are that you have to be the person timetable to have the code. Um, you also have to provide it to them in some way. You also don't know who is remotely learning and who is rumor learning. Uh, if you are doing some kind of streaming delivery, technically those that are streaming are present in the class. They may not be engaging. They may not even be there. They may have joined the session and left or they may be doing other things, but they're still technically in attendance. So you need to give them the code. So you can't just put it up for those in the room. You have to put it up digitally uh, for everybody uh, in attendance. Okay. And then of course you would need to edit that part out of any uh, follow-up video so that students aren't trying to enter the code when they no longer can and then querying why they're unable to register their attendance because they watched the recording or they're trying to make it seem like they were there for whatever reason there may be. The major limitation from an academic point of view is that nobody from an academic background can access the data at a module level. You can't even technically access it at a, an individual student level unless they are your personal tutee in whichever form of tutoring you're using, APT or coaching, and the module leader can't access the module level information, which means you can't actually get a handle on what module attendance is like and whether it dwindles or whether it goes up around assessment times or particular members of staff as to whether there's something that needs looking at or doing more of. And this can be quite a hindrance in terms of the student experience, just not being able to access that data. Now, previously, I've been using a QR code based model of attendance. It uses Microsoft Forms. The students can scan the QR code, which you put up on the screen at some point in your teaching session. And I'm going to show you what I've, I've done with that uh, in order to make it robust so that they can't gamify. So it gives a genuine picture and mainly how to make it simple. The other thing that I have just done is a way of collating each individual register into a larger Excel workbook using multiple sheets and actually tallying using the count function, uh, the count if function, the number of times that they are present so that you can get a sense of whether they have dropped off, whether their attendance is good, and more importantly, from uh, an academic success point of view, where that correlates with any assessments that come up. And so I'm going to show you how to do that as briefly as I can, both the attendance register and the way of collating that information to make it useful for academics, because our access to my engagement is incredibly limited. Now, of course, you must still use my attendance, but it's no big deal using this in tandem with uh, the my attendance code. Students don't seem to be confused so far, though we are only into the first actual teaching week of term, but even new students aren't really phased by doing uh, basically the same thing two minorly different ways. So let's jump right in. Now this is a series of Microsoft Forms that I've made for a variety of reasons. Uh, you can make a Microsoft Form one of two ways. You can either do a new form. This could be a new quiz, it could be a new survey. What that does, however, is it creates a form within forms that you have to download the, the results um, at whatever time point you're at. You download the results at that fixed moment in time. If, however, you go to something like uh, OneDrive 
and you go to new you have the option of course for of an Excel workbook or indeed forms for Excel and what this will do is open up the opportunity to create a new form we'll just call this register and you basically create the form in there now what that does is it automatically ups updates the Excel spreadsheet sitting behind this whenever new information is added and therefore you are able to download and look at real-time information either by clicking on the responses and open Excel which will give you the data at that fixed time or you can open the Excel uh, spreadsheet from the source that you've saved it at which in this case would be down here and that would open up the form that I'm in the process of creating so let's just tinker with that now I'm just adding a very simple question and it's one reason that I like to use these Excel forms because of course since it's saving there because of course what that will do is it provides me the way of knowing which cohort of students on a shared module are actually appearing on that course and there we go so it's got the ID the start time completion time email name and there's the question that I added what course are you on and if I had responded to that it would fill it in so it has automatically updated the Excel spreadsheet based on the form and I have a separate video on how to make these now a key thing within these forms and this is what makes it robust is go to settings make sure that the only people that can fill in the form are people in my organization and that you record the name what this does is it means the students have to log in using their university accounts which they should know and they can access from their phones it will automatically record their name which is what we see here the time that they filled it in the completion time the email of the student and this is key to the register as well as their names they don't need to worry about misspelling their name putting their first name last and the last name first but the email is the key one because that is in the same order no matter where you get things now this is important because my reference list is going to be the class list stored in timetables now the timetabling website logs student names by surname then first name Microsoft Forms however captures first name then surname but the email is constant okay now the start time is important because it captures the date and the time and I'll show you uh, that in a moment here is the lecture register that I'm going to use for all future lectures now here's the thing because it captures their name I don't need to ask them for their name or the student number I know it's them unless they want to give their login information to a friend we have the course question just so I know roughly how many of the, those that showed up were biomedical science and how many were biological sciences this is the thing that makes it unique to the day what is the word of the lecture and put it in basically a password of the day and it can be anything you think of at the time it doesn't have to be an actual password like the my attendance code you could just say the first word that pops in your head and as long as they all put the same word in you know that they were there on that day now as I mentioned the date of starting is saved and what this means is that you can use the same QR code which I'll show you here for every single lecture because it will capture the date that they did it and it should of course be the date that the lecture or the practical or the workshop or the tutorial was on so you can put this up on the screen students can scan it with their phone and pretty much any camera app nowadays you don't need a specific QR code reader and it will capture all the information you need so that's how we get a robust safe and location based uh, way of doing it the beauty of doing it in tandem is that of course what you can do is use my attendance to provide the code to everybody and that captures those who attended the lecture in any format but at the time then you have the QR code and you provide that only on the screen for those in the room you don't put it on a shared screen you can put it on the document scanner if you've printed it out the doc cam uh, and that way only those in the room can scan that code because it's something visual that they can't easily send their friends okay uh, then you tell them the word of the day and it's in now they could send their friend that QR code that picture but their friend would have to have uh, a separate phone in order to scan the screen of the first phone or indeed I suppose they could send it as an email as an attachment and they could be at a computer scan it with the phone but at that point we're getting to gamification strategies of just telling us you're there that hopefully no one's willing to go to that much effort to try and cheat the system so now I'm going to talk you through what we can do that with information to give us a tally across the semester or across the year 
for that particular module so we have module information so that we know which modules have good attendance poor attendance waxing and waning attendance whether it's related to particular staff whether it's related to assessment bunching dates all the information that helps us with the student experience outside of that which my engagement is trying to capture from a well-being perspective so here we go let's have a look at that so here I've got the Microsoft Forms information gathered from a particular lecture okay there were only 139 out of the 240 should have been there pretty bad okay that was the introduction during starting block I then have using the same QR code all the information that I extracted from that same form that same data output but from the date of the lecture this week okay what I've and I've kept those as separate sheets and each week I can add a sheet where I'm simply pasting in all the information from that particular week's capture I can order the overall spreadsheet the constantly updating one QR code one time thing but with different words so you know it's week by week and you know they're not gaming anything I can order it by date copy and paste the information into a new sheet within this workbook and that would be week 14 down here over here in this last sheet I have class list and class list is where I've downloaded the class list from the timetabling website so that I have the name the course and the email addresses of the students that are enrolled on the module then what we can do is use the count if function within Excel to compare whether this email address appears in this sheet and then in another column whether it appears in this sheet and so on and so on and this is what the function looks like if count if and then I capture the particular sheet so the week 12 introduction sheet okay which you do by selecting the sheet down here and dragging all the information these dollar signs make it constant so that when I copy the formula drag it down to make it the same formula for everybody but changing one feature the dollar signs make that part constant so in every sheet it will check cell D1 to D250 and that is the column that in those sheets their email address sits so it's basically looking for here's the email is there a match in this sheet week 12 intro at some point with that email we then have that compared with C2 which is this point here and that's in blue because it's highlighted that email address and what I want it to do if there is a match is to say present okay now when I dragged that down it then automatically checked and if we look at this one we've got D1 to D250 again because there should be 240 students in the class list but it's comparing it to C17 which is this email and so we do that all the way down and it tells me who was present in each of those weeks I can see who was in the introductory session so for example wasn't in the intro was in the lecture was in the intro wasn't in the lecture very easy to do and it's very easy to manually add students and it's just that formula and you can copy it over to each of these and all I'll have to change each time is this and it'll be week 14 lecture, week 15 lecture, week 16, or actually in the case of how my module runs, uh, week 14 practical, week 15 lecture, week 16 practical, and so on. It's that easy, and you can then tally at the end to see just how many they've been present for and how many they've missed. You can then compare that with assessment. Now for my module, I do monthly exams and continuous coursework, and so it will be very easy for me to look and see after two weeks of absence how was an individual student's monthly exam score were they able to succeed based purely on the recordings and the PowerPoints or was being present that which gave students a better academic outcome so that's really all there is to it it does look a little bit complicated I am not in any way an Excel expert and I found this formula online and tweaked a tiny bit of the code in order to have it make more sense to me it's a really robust way of collecting data using it alongside my attendance so that we're not breaking any rules we're not going outside of that which is expected of us it's not putting any additional burden on students but it is a good way of using registers and attendance for academic purposes not just well-being purposes and on giving module leaders and any member of academic staff you want to access to the documents
And that's a really important part of tracking assessments, tracking academic success, making sure that students are genuinely there and even tweaking it to allow for different modalities of delivering the teaching, be that on campus or online, to keep the rumors and the remoters separate in the attendance while still being able to measure their engagement. I hope you found that useful. See you next time.